Uh, Baby Ray. <clears throat> his, his people there in Sierra Leone were being subjected to the hut tax. You know, that's when the British said, look, you, you, we want money. And they said, well, we're not giving you any money. They said, well, we want you to pay us in pounds. And the people say, no, what, pay you in pounds for what? We're not doing anything for you. You haven't done anything for us. They said, okay, we know what we do. They did the same thing in Kenya, by the way. We're going to put a tax on your hut. Tax, so you've been living in the hut for how long? Now, they, now you have to pay the tax of that hut in British money, pound, shilling, or whatever. So you don't have pounds, shilling. So now you have to go work for them to earn the pounds to pay the hut tax. They live in, of course, he said, you guys are insane. We're not doing it. So they fought it. They fought, he fought to the end, you know. And so he's known for that resistance and a successful resistance against the British for a long time, by the way. Felix Mumi, I put him on here because he's a politician, uh, uh, you know, kind of a radical politician out of Cameroon. And he was poisoned, uh, you know, by Western intelligence folks with uh, thallium and in his food while he was, you know, in his wine or drink while he was doing some diplomatic visit there. But I just like to say, when you have these kind of revolutionary political thinkers, don't, don't let the them food. drink, <laughs> don't let them drink other people's stuff if you can. Try to protect them and, you know, watch them getting slipped the mickeys. Uh, Sakuhune from the Limpopo side, he was another one he had to resist, not just the British, but of course the Africans, and, um, and did so successfully for a long time. Nehanda, you may, may have met people, a few sisters calling themselves Nehanda. She was a spiritual, um, uh, I, I want to say spiritual warrior there in Zimbabwe during the time when they were having this, uh, in, inspiring the Shemarengas which were the uprisings against the British. So she's very popular uh, still in Zimbabwe to this day. Martin Luther King Jr., um, human rights, and gave his life, right? I led my people into a burning house. Yeah, well, he, he said that. What he told Harry Belafonte, he's afraid that maybe he is leading the people into a burning house. Is it burning, y'all? <laughs> uh -huh, okay. It's hot. So it's hot if it ain't burning. Okay, Hat Shepsut, one of the great uh, female uh, uh, pharaohs of ancient Kemet. And I, I don't know if some of you have seen some of the just the grand uh, buildings and the grand structures that, that, that she's built. Not only that, she was, of course, uh, kind of considered more of an international... Um, uh, I don't want to use the word imperialist, but, it, you know, she had spread far beyond just her local area, her power and, and influence. Kaliterat, I was mentioning back here. Now, Nubia is basically, you know, northern Sudan again today, which was, you know, we had the sister over here, and I told you she basically stopped the, stopped the Roman army and did a uh, treaty for 300 years. Well, here's the same area. By now, it's the Arabs, right? So the Arabs are now descending into black Africa. So they run into Kaliterat and his people, right, in the same basic area. Fought, fought, fought. He was able to fight them to a standstill, have a treaty with them called the Bakht, B-A-Q-T. And the treaty lasted 700 years. So she was able to keep the Romans out and whoever followed them for 300. Then we come down and we have this brother and his people being able to keep the Arabs out for another 700. So it's not like we just laid down and played dead. You know, we, when we drew our lines and we had our treaties, they meant something because we had the power to enforce them, which is what we lack today. The greatest of all times, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. But they hated him when he was hungry. Oh, well, you know, they're always going to hate him when he's doing what he's doing. But, you know, if there's such thing as a man, that's it right there. Even Dr. King was saying, look, this man gave up millions of dollars, prestige and everything. He says, so we don't care what you think about his religion, you have to admire his courage. Exactly. Yeah. La Jouk, Senegal. The French, of course, are in Senegal trying to run their railroad into the country, deep in hinterland to, you know, bring resources out. Uh, he was a Damal of Kaior. If you go to Senegal today, you'll see the place Kaior is a fishing village. I've been there a few times. But yeah, he fought them furiously over this railroad. Of course, he died in battle, but he didn't die cheaply. He took a lot of them with him. So, like Giorgio, he's a hero in Senegal, of course. Uh, Antonio Maceo, some of you have gone to 
to uh, Cuba. I haven't gone, but since uh, you know people have been going now, they say they give a lot of respect and a lot of uh, monuments around and things around Maceo, you know, because he was uh, the general that was leading the Cuban army against the Spanish, you know, when they were getting their, their independence. So he's well known, the bronze titan, I think they call him. So I just like the youngsters to know that even in places like Cuba, you know, our men and our women led struggles against uh, uh, oppression, imperialism, and in that case, another type of colonialism. Patrice Lumumba, Congo, a lot of you have heard Lumumba's name, first pre premier. Congo, of course, he was killed very early on, um, but, you know, there was, a, of course, as you all have guessed, there was a lot of uh, outside interference with some of your friends. <laughs> okay. Kim Kwabaneka is another uh, freedom fighter out of Tanzania. Of course, they were resisting. They were resisting the Germans at the time. And um, he's also, they also call him Nkwawa, so sometimes you may see Nkwawa the king in Kwawa who was uh, known for resisting the Germans of that. Hannibal, which uh, Dr. Clark again, love Dr. Clark, you know, he taught us so much. He say, you know, basically the greatest military strategist of all times, if you think of what he was able to do from Carthage through the Alps to surround the, the yeah, take the elephants through the Alps to surround the um, room. And basically Hannibal. put them out of commission in terms of their protrusion into the Africa. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, some people say, oh, wait, wait, you know, he did this, he did that. But, you know, Honorable Elijah Muhammad has organized more black folks after Marcus Garvey than anybody else. Yeah. Than anybody else. You look around, who's done what he's done outside of Garvey in America? They ain't seen it before or since. So I think that's why they want to rain all of this on you about these indiscretions, which, you know, I'm not forgiven one way or another. But the man organized black people, and we, haven't, and we haven't had nothing like that since. Were they in discussion? Yeah, that's well, you know, that's, that's questionable. whether, you know, I mean, okay. <laughs>